Hello, I'm Mayor Skip Hall. Welcome to my Council Conversation Show. What a difference a year makes. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, no one could have predicted that just one year later, the City of Surprise would be welcoming a record pace of new commercial and residential development. Surprise is several emerging commercial growth corridors right now, but no two areas have received more visibility or anticipation than Surprise City Center and the Prasada Loop 303. Today, I'll be talking with Scott Phillips, Vice President of Carefree Partners, and Josh Simon, founder and CEO of Simon CRE. Scott represents the managing partnership at Surprise Center Development Company, which owns more than 400 developable acres at Surprise City Center. Josh is leading development in the Prasada 303 corridor, adjacent to our new Costco. Later in the show, I'll be joined by President and CEO of Greater Phoenix Economic Council, Chris Camacho, to talk about the growth of Surprise and the West Valley for new employment projects. First up are Scott and Josh. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Bet. Great to be here. So Scott, can you elaborate a little bit on the vision of City Center and what it takes to get that to fruition? Well, as, as we've been talking about for a long time, I, you know, it's a, it's a project that's the size of downtown Phoenix. Um, it is, uh, the key has been to maintain patience and perseverance through the ups and downs. And we're finally at that point where the market is ready to accept greater densities and the quality development that we're, that we're throwing at it. So you're seeing some great projects come out of the ground now, not just the, the Rangers and the Royals. Uh, the Royals are under construction now, the Rangers are open. Uh, Mirat City Center, which is 193 units. Uh, we have 114 units that just uh, broke ground up, uh, up by the restaurants off of Bell Road. Uh -huh. And we're really excited about that project. And we have more projects in escrow and uh, a lot more interest. So we could be looking at a thousand new units, 2000 people living on property in the next 36 to 48 months. Wow. And Great. that's a capital okay. investment of about, you know, 150 to $200 million in the city center. Right, right. Excellent. So. We as a city council have been working many years on attracting employers here so that we have more of our residents working in Surprise rather than commuting. Yep. So what can you tell us about any prospects that, you can, that you're working on to help us with that? Well, we've always identified as uh, the medical industry as being a key industry to target mm -hmm. for city center, uh, but certainly uh, office uses and working closely with GPEC and ACA and, and the city economic development staff, we've all identified different uses that would work really, really well in city center. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's one of those where we've seen a lot of disruption in employment in office in medical uh, for the last 15 years due to a number of different factors. but. Um, we're, we're zeroing in on that and the West Valley is getting to be a stronger, um, uh, I guess, a, a destination for major employment and, um, and surprises exceptionally well positioned uh, along the 303 between I-17 and I-10. So we all know what's happening with uh, Taiwan Semiconductor up in the north side. Um, and then the, the employment corridors along 303 on the south side and surprises well positioned to take advantage of being in the middle of all of that great activity. Right. right. So collaboration is important mm -hmm. and quality of life of, of our city residents is important. So what collaboration efforts are you making with sports and tourism and parks and rec department and Ottawa University to that end? That, that's, that's a big question. And it's, uh, it's something that occupies me every day. Um, and uh, you know, fortunately surprise is, is known throughout the Valley, throughout the state as being a a destination for high quality, quality of life initiatives. So parks and rec department, certainly spring training. I think it's the best spring training facility in, in the state still, um, even being, I agree. Um, you know, almost 20 years old. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, so the, the things that surprise is working on that, that check the boxes of, of recreation and tourism, you know, we want to be in the forefront of that and be right in the mix of it. So um, as you look at a downtown and, and what it requires to build a downtown, we need everything there. So the more tourism we can bring in, the more um, community amenities we can bring in together, and it, and it really takes a collaborative effort to do that, the better off we're going to be. And, and we've had some starts and stops in the past, and we're going to have more. But the fact of the matter is we're sitting down once, twice, three times a week to talk about these opportunities. And that's not just the the tourism and sports and, and quality of life stuff, that's also the employment, that's also the retail. All of that is a part of the, the program of, of how do we build out a downtown uh, in, in really what's becoming an emerging 
powerhouse of a market. Right. The city center is a lot larger than it really looks yeah. when, you, when you just drive by. Yep. And so uh, can you talk to the residents about some of the things you're working on as far as prospects for city center? Yeah, I, I, in addition to the, to the multifamily, and, and it's one of those old adages that, and, and Josh knows this better than anybody because this is the business he's been in, but, but retail follows rooftops. Yep. You gotta have enough people in the market. You gotta have enough income. You, you've gotta have the right demographics. Um, to support the type of retail you're targeting. Right. So we are at that point while we're pushing multifamily and trying to get the, the higher quality, the, the, the higher rents, getting, getting the, the type of, um, of highly amenitized residential in the city center, that'll help drive us to, to some of the higher quality retail tenants as well. So we have designed a plan on about 78 acres at the corner of Bullard and Bell um, that will try to capitalize on the the strength of the surprise market and what it's become over the last and let's say just say over the last decade right increasing incomes you know greater number of people a trade area that now exceeds two hundred fifty thousand people all those things are part of the the program driving us towards that walkable retail and uh, specialized restaurants and there's an entertainment component um, josh is going to knock it out on the park on 303 and i would say that we're we're not um we're not competitive on on those users we're actually complimentary because Josh right. is, is here to confirm that the, the trade area in Surprise can really support a lot more retail than we have now. Right. He's, right. he's demonstrating agree. that already. I agree. Um, and, uh, and so we're also going to capitalize on that. And, and the more critical mass we have, and, and we're two very different types of retail, I think. Yeah. You know, he's going to get those, those box guys and some of the restaurants that really like to go along with those and some of the entertainment and retail that really works well with that. And, and we're taking a little bit different tact. Right. Um, so it all works together and, and we're all in this, you know, the saying a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. We actually believe in that. It looks and like Costco is going to squeak by. I, I think they're going to do OK. You know, I think I just I was there <laughs> yesterday and I could hardly get in the place. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah. And there was like uh, six, seven cars in line to get gas. Yeah. Uh, so they're, that part of it's doing okay. Too. I think it's going to be okay out there. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so how, you know, you, you talked a little bit about it, Scott, but, but how, how do you see the incredible development that Josh and his company is doing and the Costco investment and all the rest of the things that are going on on 303? How do you see it affecting city center or do you? So I've got to go compliment Josh Simon as a, as somebody that, that, uh, that people perceive, well, we're competitive with him. We're not competitive. I, I, I just, I believe fully Josh does a great product. He's proven himself over and over again. He's going to start blushing here. But um, I think that what he's going to pull off on the 303, again, is additive to surprise as a whole. I don't think it's competitive with what we're trying to do. Uh, we're creating two different it's atmospheres. It's a different decision, kind it, of, isn't it? it yeah, it's, I mean, it, yeah. A consumer is going to... They're two different choices that consumers are going to make, and, and they're not mutually exclusive at all. Yeah. In fact, they're really, frankly, complementary. Okay. So, um, so we're we're excited to see him him succeed. I, I won't put words in his mouth and say he's excited <laughs> to see us succeed, but you know, I, yeah. I, I think he probably will be. His, <laughs> yeah. The rising tide lifts all ships. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got it. You got it. So, hey, Josh, you know, you've been in the real estate industry for 17 years and, yep. and many I have an age today. <laughs> there's been many accolades about your achievements and uh, how would you describe the commercial real estate market in surprise I think it's fantastic it's um, when we started working on the Prasada project a year ago I remember when we went under contract to purchase the land and I thought to myself and our brokers like could there be a worse time and this was the end of February <laughs> last year right before the right. lockdowns and I was like wow oh. what what's going on but through it what we've seen is we've seen all these retailers that have done well through the pandemic yeah. they still want to grow right. and they want to be in surprise you right. we haven't had in Arizona a center of any magnitude built in over eight years, probably closer to a decade. Um, and also you have a surprise that is, is growing. It's 2.7% growth. And it's you know, one of the fastest growing metros in Phoenix. And so I, you combine all that stuff together and it's super exciting. And it's really fun to be a part of. That's great. So how do, how do you see the differentiation between the surprise market and other markets like in the West Valley? Or 
Well, I think one, it's, you know, you've got the infrastructure. The 303 is such a game changer where, you know, you look at the Southeast Valley, they're playing catch up with a lot of things like right. SR24. They're just bringing that extension over to Ironwood where that you guys have all that done. You guys have, you know, flat land. You don't have topography issues. Right. And then I think most importantly, it's leadership. It's leadership in your office. And then it's also with your city staff. You have a group of economic development people that are, you know, our brokers are going to get mad, but they're better than our brokers. They <laughs> literally call every retailer, restaurant group, and they are the best pitch people for well, the good. city of Surprise. Well, good. That's good. That's good to hear, Josh. So, um, You've been working in an area called Prasada, and is there anything you'd like to share with us or with the residents about what's going on there? There's a lot with? of excitement. <laughs> I know everybody wants to know names. You know, I just think it's interesting. It, it shows how important that area has been for 15 years. You go back, that was supposed to be a mall. Right. Um, Sweetwater was gonna go under the 303. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was a city center like project back then, right. but it's had to evolve. We but had the to excited, adapt, right? Yeah, exactly. And, this project, we have over 400,000 square feet of leases, LOIs, which are letters of intent to lease sure. purchase from regional, national, local restaurants, you know, uh, retail tenants. To put that in perspective, 400,000 uh, feet is eight football fields worth wow. of retail. Yeah. So everyone's talking about e-commerce is gonna destroy retail. <laughs> We've got multiple offers on the same space. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, Josh, so. that's great. Well, eventually you can you can talk about who these guys are, but I know you're under, you know, NDAs and all that. I, we get that, but uh, but I know that you're working on a lot of things. So you know you've been used to a lot of fluid situations in the past with market gyrations, et cetera. So uh, you don't see any slowdown in the growth of retail, huh? Right now. Well, I think it depends on where you're at. Surprise, Phoenix, Arizona is a fantastic market. I was meeting with a um, mortgage broker this morning from New York and you know, retail is really bad in New York City right uh -huh. now, right? And so I think it just depends on the market and you have in Surprise and at Prasada and at your project, you haven't had retail built out there in over a decade, a, right. a substantial amount. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing this pent up demand and you're seeing everyone wanting to be in the West Valley. And thanks to all your initiatives as a city, like that's driving a ton of demand from retailers. And we're super excited. Super. That's great. Well, thank you both for joining me today. And it's exciting to hear all the things that are going on and and what we although we can't talk specifics in general, there's a lot of things going on and I uh, really appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. So coming up next, I'll talk with the president and CEO of Greater Phoenix Economic Council. So welcome back to the show. Here with me now is Chris Camacho, the president and CEO of the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, or GPEC. Chris, thanks for being here today. It's great to see you, Mayor. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, we've been a community partner with GPEC for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so to, for some of our viewers, could you talk about the mission of Greater Phoenix Economic Council? You bet. So Greater Phoenix Economic Council is a 31-year-old organization. It's a nonprofit structure that brings together the public and private sector all for the, the betterment of our citizens by bringing new companies to market. So that's companies from around the world that are selecting Greater Phoenix to invest and, and create jobs. And we also focus on the branding and the competitiveness side of the region as well. So we unite the public and private forces all to ensure that the economy is evolving in the way it should. And I think we're in a pretty good spot right now, as, as we were talking about a few I, moments ago. I think so. I think so, Chris. No, your people do a great job for us and, and for the whole greater Phoenix area. Um, so from your perspective, how well do you see the city of Surprise positioned? for retail development and other development. Yeah, certainly. So, you know, Surprise has always been this fascinating community that's, it's young, it's vibrant, it's growing, and, you know, has a great land position here in the West Valley. And just in the last year, in the fourth quarter, we saw about three and a half million square feet of new industrial coming to the West Side. So it's the West Side's time. And, and not only are we seeing industrial and now suburban office interest uh, from a capital markets perspective, but understand retail is growing immensely as well. And so I think, you know, the combination of, 
migration of Californians and others that right. you know are tired of of the the really tough winters are, are selecting uh, surprise in these other communities to really embrace everything that we offer, which is a high quality of life with great amenities, greater recreational opportunities, coupled with a very pro business environment. And you know, I give a lot of credit to mayors like you that that step in, work with councils, work with city management, really to make. Uh, this community very pro business, very safe, very organized, and but but really practical at the same time. We're not a place like where I came from in Illinois, where you need to worry about politics and worry about vendettas. This is really about <laughs> working together for the right. betterment of our community, and that's that's really what Surprise is all about. Right. So, do you see advanced manufacturing as one of the opportunities, Chris? Well, you know, so surprise? no question. So, Surprise is this. You know, again, I look at the land base at, at a number of your industrial and commerce parks. You have the requisite infrastructure, you have your private owners of those lands that have worked with the cities for years to ensure that the positioning of the parks are, are well suited for new industry. Uh, and, and so I think you're gonna see advanced manufacturing, you'll see some e-commerce and distribution activity. And, and I think the next wave over the next 10 years, you're gonna see suburban office growth uh, on the west side, unlike anything we've seen before. So, yeah. you know, certainly Scottsdale, Tempe, Phoenix, and the more urban centers have seen that growth. But, you know, now, you know, in the next kind of wave, the Southeast Valley and, and the West Valley overall, we're going to see a balance in terms of jobs equity because mm -hmm. we're four and a half, almost now 4.8 million people. And as we continue to add about a million people every 10 years, we're going to see these companies select areas where they can access labor markets, but also where there's strong transportation corridors mm -hmm. and those strong amenity bases. So right. as I talk to Janine and Mike and Sam on your team here, I mean, what a team that goes out and embraces the local community and, and you know, works to problem solve every step of the way. And that's what I think the yield of the benefits going to be over the next several years, where you're going to see pretty significant uh, economic opportunities coming to surprise. Okay, well, that's, that's good. Um, and, you know, we're one of the West Valley communities who's getting some traction. There's other, a lot of other West Valley communities are too. So you touched a little bit on it, but as a West Valley, you see, you see a lot of opportunity in terms of GPEC bringing companies to the West Valley because of labor and land and? Well, first and foremost, the, the activity now is about 15% above last year. It is. If you would have okay. told me that as I talked to our chairman last wow. year saying, I was expecting about a 20% decrease in activity. Right. And our numbers are, are steadily improving in terms of companies that are evaluating Metro Phoenix from all around the world. Now, uh, you know, deduce that further in terms of how does Surprise fit into that? Uh, what Surprise has done with the city center, with Ottawa University, and, and the type of delivery system for now students being shifting into a residential base, having a kind of a nerve center, if you will, right. Uh, right in the heart of the city, producing people that are meeting the needs of whether it's business or health sciences, applied uh, health growth, you're going you're gonna to be meeting that need with your local population base. And that's different from where we were 15 years ago, where a lot of the, the growth out west was retirees and a lot of um, you know, kind of movement from the center, center core out west because it was cheaper and more affordable mm -hmm. housing alternatives today. Not only do you have those migratory patterns, but you have young families moving here, well-educated uh, individuals. When I looked at the stats of surprise of those with some college and baccalaureate degrees, right. I mean, two thirds of your resident base have that, uh, have that exposure now. And so right. you're building a really quality labor pool in a reverse commute setting where industrial and office users are seeing that labor mix and that trade area. Right. And you're gonna start seeing more and more activity come to this area. Right, interesting. Well, we're only in, we're just wrapping up the first quarter of 2021 and things are accelerating. I mean, so for, just from a greater Phoenix market, from a macro market, what, what's driving this? Chris. Yeah, so I was on a program last week with uh, Dr. Christopher Thornburg, who's one of the national acclaimed economists on projecting kind of market dynamics. And he and I were talking about the national economy, which is expected to kind of continue to recover as we you know, see a widespread inoculation of our, of our population base. Second to that was Arizona and Metro Phoenix. The Metro Phoenix economy is expected to be one of the fastest uh, recovering markets in the United States in 2021. Mm. We're expecting full recovery from the, the jobs based on the induced impact that uh, you know, COVID depressed the, the jobs market. Uh, as that happens, it's expected that 22, we will see between three and 4% GDP growth. So what does that mean for the layman? It's going to mean companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, which we talked about, massive North Phoenix location. Right. A lot of the supplier base is going to be served from here, from Southern California, uh, even Northern Mexico over time. And that's one project. It's going right. to yield thousands of jobs, billion dollars of investment, billions of investment. And over time, 
you're going to need those those supplemental services to support the growing companies that are here. So, right. you know, the Tacoma Box Company, the you know companies in in injection molding, a lot of the supplier base in the industrial uh, you know area is is you know looking at surprise today. But the recovery is going to lead to more retail, more higher quality amenities, right. because those kind of firms they want to go where jobs are going and they want to go where population and demographic shifts are happening. Fortunately for all of us, we get to see the sunshine every day, but it's so much more than that. But I'll tell you, when I talk to folks in Chicago and New York, or even more recently in Austin, Texas or Dallas, they're seeing the stability and redundancy of our grid uh, from a manufacturing perspective or data centers, all that matters. And right, so it sure it does. Greater Phoenix is in a unique spot. We have great leadership at the mayoral and in city council level. Governor Ducey's done a really good job of ensuring that you know he's making the right strategic investments in core infrastructure. Uh, to support our city. So we're, you know, I, I probably get paid to say, say this and think this way, <laughs> but I would argue that we're in one of the most unique environments and we're going to be in this kind of unique growth position for the next decade. That's great. Well, it's it's great having you, Chris, and, and uh, your team. I mean, you got a great team and you're a great leader of them and you've just been doing a great job. So we really appreciate it. And I know there's some things on the horizon here we really can't talk about, that are specific to surprise, but but uh, there's some things that are swirling around that we're looking forward to. So yeah. appreciate everything you've been doing, Chris. Well, I, I do appreciate it. And I know, Mayor, we get to convene the, the regional mayors quarterly and we get to talk about hard issues and whether it's it's transit, transportation, right. it's it's you know labor force, it's all of these things, infrastructure, it all plays together into how we compete for these new jobs. And yes. I always laugh when I when I hear, well, you know, you want another one. Well when these new projects come to town, that generally, I mean, they're taking six to nine months of pretty arduous due diligence, right. a lot of data analysis, a lot of meetings with other firms like the, like, like the companies that are evaluating the market, and then working with the city on the development services side, Surprise has done an incredible job in ensuring from city management to development services to economic development, the pro-business attitude that permeates mm -hmm. you know, these city walls, mm -hmm. it's felt by the companies, and yeah. they're very embraced, and so, yeah. You know, that, that doesn't happen across the country, nor does it happen in a regional setting where mayors and cities actually work together. Right. And so, <laughs> you know, that, that's one thing I've probably been the most proud of in my 13 years at GPAC is that, you know, we've built a coalition where, again, we're pro-business. We're, we're going to run through walls to, to bring new jobs to our, to our citizens. Right. And, and we're, we're unapologetic about that. I mean, right. we, we're really prideful that, you know, we get to see a lot of these global companies and when we get that first call, we get that first meeting with them, we wanna show well, because they're going to Dallas next or Austin after that, and we wanna make sure that you know, they feel, you know, not only feel the love, but they feel the sophistication that we can bring to help these companies yes. uh, analyze the market, and surprise yes. is a true testimony of that. And I think you told me one time, which I thought was kind of interesting, where now the a lot of HR directors are coming with the site selectors, because the human resource people are looking at what kind of quality of life are the employees that are moving here going to have. And that's a that's part of the big decision. Right? Well, you touch on a very important topic, Mayor, where it used to be, you know, tax folks like me and finance people, and it was all about the math. It was about the numbers, return on cost of capital for that right. investment, supply chain. You're absolutely right. The the HR conversation now is the leading conversation because you know this employee centered culture and particularly I would say COVID's even exacerbated that yes. where you know, individual companies want to hold onto their employees, want to ensure that the employee culture is strong. And as a byproduct, the HR teams are wanting to assess what's the livability attribute like, what's the mm -hmm. amenity base like, the recreational uh, access for the employees, and how is the community going to embrace if, if a company is going to come in and hire 80% from the local base, right. they want to make sure that there's quality labor there. And if they're importing 20% from somewhere else, how are those twenty percent going to, you know, to, you get integrated into into the community? Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's what we do really well. One of the taglines uh, I use when I'm traveling globally is that Greater Phoenix is one of the easiest places to be new, because uh -huh. it's a true meritocracy. Seventy percent <laughs> of us are from somewhere else, adult right. population. <laughs> so it's kind of like this melting pot of new people and new ideas, and right. we're very embracing uh, to new people. And you know, if, if you go, you know, for those of you watching, go check your neighborhood. I would bet many of the residents there are from somewhere else, and it's just kind of an open culture that, that welcomes people, and that's, that's very unique. It really is unique. Good stuff, Chris. Thanks again for taking the time to come out today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's certainly an exciting time and surprise with new development across the city and a whole lot more to come. Have questions or comments for me? I'd love to hear from you. You can call or email me anytime 
and I welcome you to sign up for my newsletter, which is filled with the latest city news and information. Just click on the notify me button on my website to sign up. Thanks for watching.